I almost won one round because I just was running the whole time and I somehow outlasted and you were like cheering me on and I almost <laughs> made it, but the guy like killed me in the end. It was survival, man. It was. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, you were running and you were driving away and then towards the end, I, I think we were trying to get you to hide in different bushes. <laughs> Everyone's yelling at me and I'm trying to like have a serious conversation about my faith. Hello and welcome to another episode of our conversation on video games and evangelization. I'm Bobby Angel with the Word on Fire Institute. With me is a friend, Father Blake Britton, a priest of the Diocese of Orlando, a Word on Fire contributor, and a video game lover. Father Blake, how are you doing? Wonderful, thank you. Happy to be here. I'm excited for today's conversation. We actually have a father, a husband, a parish worker, and an avid online gamer. We want to welcome to the show Jonathan Blevins. Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you guys so much for having me. Jonathan, what's the first video game you ever played? I have vague memories of playing Super Mario Brothers and different versions of Mario with my dad. But the first game I ever really got into and loved and played a lot was Pokemon Blue. Hmm. Are you so, familiar? Yes, oh. a classic. <laughs> I, was, I was a Pokemon Red guy. But so we would have been enemies. We would have been, yes, enemies. We would have had to physically connect the Game Boys with a wire, I remember, yes. to yes. fight each other. Different gyms, different gyms. Don't don't mind him, Jonathan. So I'll be conducting the rest of the interview. <laughs> now, back in my day, there were only 150 Pokemon. Yeah, well, absolutely. 151. <laughs> and I had them all memorized with the Pokemon rap, which now is just irrelevant. Exactly. It's... Man, that was awesome. Those are good gaming days. A single like, tear falls from my face. <laughs> Jonathan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what it is, what, what the work is that you do, as well as how you're involved with video games? Yeah, so as you said, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Jody. We have three kids, two boys and a girl. Don't ask me their ages. I'm really bad at numbers. <laughs> um, I'm a uh, director of evangelization at a parish outside of Chicago, St. James uh, Catholic Parish in Arlington Heights. Um, I do a lot of other different speaking stuff and, tra and, and training other different parishes and stuff like that. And a couple of years ago, I got into streaming on Twitch, which we'll talk a little bit about. Um, you know, kind of a pre-evangelization thing of building a positive community um, in or while playing video games at the same time. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been pretty wild. And I also do some, some stuff with a, a thing called Super Squares with the NFL, hence the hmm. NFL stuff in the background, all my Detroit Lions stuff. Big fan. We hadn't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to put the green screen down, but I really just want to be my true authentic self. Yeah. We were thinking that if you could just show us a little bit more of your appreciation for the Detroit Lions, uh, we were hoping that you would find some more. It's very, <laughs> it's very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, there it is. <laughs> Jonathan, did you grow up Catholic? Did you uh, leave the faith at all? Are you a convert? What's your, uh, can you give us a bit of your testimony of faith? Yeah. So I grew up Catholic. Uh, Mom, Mom was Catholic. Um, whole family was Catholic. My dad became Catholic when my brother was, I believe, in eighth grade. So I would have been a sophomore. We went to church almost every weekend. I owe pretty much every reason why I'm Catholic is because of my mom. But I kind of stopped caring in middle school, as one does, um, and then got put on a bus to NCYC uh, my eighth grade year. And now I'm not, it's a high school conference, at least it was back then. I didn't want to go. I was super sick. Uh, it's a really funny story. I can tell you the entire details another time, but it's kind of a long one. But I should not have gotten on that bus because I was too sick. My mom was out of town. My dad made me go anyway. Um, I had to room with a bunch of seniors. It was a, a horrible experience. And then the youth minister said, like right before the whole conference started, she said, you know what? I trust you. You can go do whatever you want. You don't have to check in with the group. You don't have to um, eat lunch with us. You just go and like find God. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So I got the whole list of speakers and topics and all that kind of stuff. And I had gone to church my whole life. We didn't really have a vibrant youth program or, or, or you know, catechesis happening. So I didn't really know much about my faith. And I saw all these crazy topics on this list. Like you could learn about the, I was like, theology of the body. What is that? <laughs> or like being Catholic and dating. And I was like, what? My church that I go to every Sunday has a, a thought on dating um, and all, all kinds of different things. And I just like went to all these different talks. I'll never forget, I was sitting under the bleachers. And I'll forget the, the name of the speaker. But it was a great talk, and I was under the bleachers because it was so full. Hmm. Uh, Matt Marr was there, and like he was still just doing music at St. Tim's. And uh, I, I have family that goes to that church, so I went and talked to him. 
And then he played what I told him was my favorite song live on stage. I didn't even know who's going to be there. And this whole, I just had this moment. It's probably my first ever real encounter with Jesus during adoration that night. It was my first time ever at adoration. And then from that moment on, I really took my faith more seriously. I was excited to be a part of youth group. Um, and then when I was about 20, I met a seminarian who's now uh, Father Dan Schuster. And it was the first person who really ever took an interest in guiding me along my faith. Um, praying with me, we prayed in public. It, he'd make me do morning prayer at Starbucks, which was wildly embarrassing at the time. Um, and, and really, because of him, I ended up majoring in theology and getting my master's in it and pursuing um, what God was calling me to do. But uh, Catholic my whole entire life, but thanks be to God for the people that he put in my life to keep me there. That's beautiful, man. I have a very similar story of, of kind of going through the motions and then getting rocked by the Lord through youth ministry in high school. Hmm. And so... A lot of similar beats to that as well. And so now as a professional, you know, you, you've sought Christ professionally, but also again, like we grew up playing similar video games, like that's kind of always a part that we go to for recreation, entertainment, and then even community. How did games stay with you through it all? It's, I, I will say I had to start with my brothers. Um, I've got two younger brothers and we would play Halo all the time. That was like the first game I can remember. You would like link up Xboxes and you could play on different TVs. And it really felt like a whole new world. Right. Um, and we played a lot with our neighborhood friends. My parents always had much more strict guidelines than our neighborhood friends. And so I didn't get to play as often. And maybe that had like the reverse effect because anytime I could play, then I would. Um, and then I kind of fell away from video games in high school as I started dating. And uh, I, do, I really cared a lot about sports and being really good at sports. And I was always outside. And then college came around. And you could, the internet was there and you could play against other people online no matter where you were and keep in touch with friends. And so I really got back into gaming in college and really just never stopped playing then. My wife kind of jokes, um, she was saying after we got married, she's like, oh, I'm sure you'll stop playing video games someday. And I was like, ah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I will. And here we are now. I'm 33 and I still play probably now more than ever. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, when it comes to, again, now the intersection of, faith and video games, how would you say they connect? It's not just like they're two separate spheres of your life. You found a way to really connect the two. And what are some of the themes and what are some of the connection points you've seen? Yeah, well, I think I think in general, right, anything we do with our life, um, we should we it shouldn't take away from from our faith. Right. So um, I, I'm not playing games that are wildly inappropriate. There's some crazy games out there nowadays. Uh, I'm playing appropriate games. A lot of them are kind of like cartoonish. There's not a ton of gore and things like that. And it really is kind of more focused on the competitive nature and then playing with friends, whether I know them and met them already in real life and am st staying in touch with them or people that I've met through streaming. I always joked um, with my brother who is a, is a big streamer uh, and he would call his stream his community. And I, I would be like, that's not your community. I'm your community. <laughs> like, it'd be like a Friday. He'd be like, oh, I can't come over. I've got it like I haven't been online in like two weeks and my community misses me. I was like, dude, I miss you. And you know, he's like, well, I saw you last week and I haven't seen them in two weeks. And then I started streaming uh, as I felt called by God to start streaming. And I, I still didn't really know what to expect. And all of a sudden I'm like meeting people and knowing their names and knowing their stories the same way that I do in real life. Um, and so I've seen faith play out there, too. A lot of people asking for prayer requests on the stream. Uh, or asking just very basic questions about God and about the Catholic faith and Christianity in general. Um, and so really the two things just go kind of well together. Yeah. yeah. It's been amazing for me as a priest and a gamer. Uh, my newest thing is now the Oculus, which I absolutely love. I mean, I'm a console gamer. I'm not a PC gamer. I've not yet made the conversion. You know, I'm still a little latch to the console, which uh, my godson gives me a lot of gripe about because he's made the full blown PC conversion. But my newest thing is the Oculus, you know, and, and I love it. I think it's uh, superb. And it's been amazing to see that opportunity for evangelization as well. I've mentioned it a couple of times. There's one game I play in particular called Onward, which is a military style game. And, you know, every time that you go into the lobby, there's a new group of guys in there. Um, and you're able to really live your faith in that context. And it touches a lot of hearts. You know, and I think that most people underappreciate uh, the value first and foremost of how powerful these communities become. Yeah. I mean, when you're with a group of guys, you know, in my case for Onward, you're dropped behind enemy lines, you know, and you are trying to complete a mission. There's a brotherhood that forms very quickly. 
um, especially if like your if your avatar gets shot down or something, you have to go and try to retrieve him and help him out. So there's a camaraderie that's formed that I don't think most people appreciate looking at it from the outside. So there's a community aspect. And then there's also just this aspect of within that community, if you're a Catholic, being able to share the faith and to, to allow your faith to infuse it. So um, I've had a very similar experience. And I think that's important to highlight that one of the major draws to the gaming industry would be this communal aspect. Um, the fact that we're able to build a community with one another, and that really ties into our nature as communicative beings, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you're just playing that game, and all of a sudden, after a couple of weeks, you're playing with the same group of guys that you met on there, and they're all swearing a ton, right? And just, like, taking the Lord's name and being all that kind of stuff, which doesn't always happen. And you're not doing it, and all of a sudden, one day, they're like, hey, uh, how come you never swear, John? <laughs> you know, and then, and then it's like, oh, you know, no big deal. Like, it's not, it doesn't bother me if you do. Uh, and they're like, oh, no, well, well, I'm Catholic. And so I just, you know, I, I try to watch it a little bit. And they're like, oh, Catholic. What? That's crazy. What does that mean? And boom, there's a conversation. Yeah. Right. That's just like one example of how it, if you're just living out your faith authentically, it, it, it comes up. And then all of a sudden weeks go by and maybe they have someone who's really sick and they're scared and they're and they're like, hey, John, I went anyway, talked to this. Would you pray with me? Mm. It's like or for me. And it's like, yeah, that, you know, that could be the first time in a long time that that, that anyone has uh, been willing to do that with them or that they've been willing to ask and from now, a, like all meaning from a game, which is crazy. Now, Jonathan, if you, if you really want to throw them for a loop next time when they say, why don't you cuss say I'm a Catholic priest <laughs> and see how they react. So I'm, gonna say, I'm a, sure that bring that opens the door to a million more conversations. Even more. It, it is hilarious, you know, because um, at one point I gave up my Oculus. We gave up all gaming with a lot of other things for the season of Lent, you know, and so my squad is wondering like, where have you been? You know, it's been like uh, over a month and you haven't played. And I was like, well, you know, I'm Catholic. You're Catholic. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm actually a Catholic priest. <laughs> they're like, oh, <laughs> you, could, you, you could hear a pin drop, you know, but it opened up an entire dialogue for them. And, and as you mentioned, people who were cursing before using the names, uh, the name of the Lord in vain, all of a sudden they're watching their language. And it's like, oh, sorry, father, you know, <laughs> in the yeah. middle of gaming, if they were to, you know, say, say a certain word or what have you. It's just it's amazing to me because it shows that in their hearts there's goodness there. And they really are looking for the truth, you know. And even the community aspect, because, again, I think any parents or any non-gamers watching this, there is that kind of like, you know, my loved one spends so much time in this fantasy, this virtual world. And we do distinguish like there's the real world, like the tangible, like the stuff in our community, in our neighborhood, in our household. And then there's a the virtual thing, but very much like especially with online gaming, like these relationships can be real mm -hmm. like there are real people out there there's real community that can be built and yeah it's for a common mission a common entertaining uh purpose but there's stories again there's a lot of horrible stuff on the internet but then there's times where stuff hits the fan and gamers on the same community the same network the same squad they they overhear like something horrible happening or where have you been there's been a death in the family there's been illness like it can be a a real community a hundred percent. Just last week, I went to a good friend of mine's uh, bishop ordination, which is not a flex. It was a, a cool first one I've ever been to and probably be the last one I've ever been to uh, or will be at. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with my wife and our other good friends who are there for the ordination. And I, I know there's a couple of friends who I've met through gaming and through Twitch uh, that live in Duluth. And one of them I, I hang out with four times a week. Like he'll be in the stream and we'll hang out after in the discord. And so I get to know him like I get to know anyone and my wife just couldn't really understand, like, why do I want to go meet this guy? She's like, yeah. you don't even know. Him. I'm like, oh, trust me, I know him very well. And so I end up hanging out with him. And so I super late into the evening at this at this pub, and we're, we start getting to talking. And I come to find out that he uh, they were married in a Catholic church, but he's not Catholic yet. And then he started asking all these questions about the church, right? It's 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 wild. That never would have happened if I wasn't if I didn't go and meet him in person and establish that real life you know relationship. Yeah. But it started from from Twitch and from this online community. Yeah. And there, it, that's been a, sort of a theme throughout the series. There are billions of gamers around the world and there's tens of millions of those who are Catholic, you know, um, either by origin or practicing. Uh, and, and they're looking for a voice or they're looking for opportunities, even if they don't know it. You know, there's a sort of the subconscious factor of like aching for the truth. And what are we doing to try to mediate that experience? And how are we evangelizing in that medium? Or how detached we are from other people in the real world of, and of looking at other people in the eye of saying hello, being neighborly. But I will make online connections yeah. some, sometimes quicker yeah. than the physical connections around me. Yeah, absolutely. 
Jonathan, yeah, can you? It, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, Twitch. So a lot of people watching are going to be familiar with mm-hmm. Facebook and Instagram and these other social media platforms. But in terms of gaming, again, we went from like physically having to connect Game Boys or physically connecting two Xboxes together. We thought eight players playing at one time was a big deal. And then you have the Internet. And then the online gaming really became a whole new phenomenon, a whole new business. There are social media platforms built around video games and watching other people play and interacting with people while they're playing. Can you explain Twitch and and how the online gaming phenomena took place? Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, it all started when with just the Internet in general and being able to connect consoles like Xbox and PlayStation back in the day to the Internet so you could play against people everywhere. And there's just a, there's there's something about the competitive nature of that, of playing against other people instead of the computer or the PC um, or even just your own friends, like playing against other people and trying to be the best at something. There, there's this competitive draw. And so it just exploded. I mean, I'll never forget mm-hmm. to ask my parents if I could get Xbox Live and, and then trying to explain to them that it was like 40 bucks a month or whatever or, or whatever it was at the time. Maybe it was a little less, but but they're like, are you crazy? I'm like, no, it's really worth it. it it's cool. And so it, it exploded. And then from there, um, being able to watch others play video games kind of has exploded and become a thing as well. In the same way that we watch the NBA or the NFL or like the best of the best in whatever it is they're doing, um, it's the same way with video games. There really is a, a talent. There are people who are naturally gifted. For instance, like my brother is 10 times better at video games than me, except for sports games. But I understand sports more. And so I can probably beat him because of, of that. But otherwise, he's just like he has faster reflexes, all these things Like he's naturally good at, at video games. Um, and so people want to watch the best of the best. And so Twitch, um, which is now owned by Amazon, uh, started out as Justin TV. It was just this where you could turn a camera on and share your screen and people could watch and type in your chat um, and interact with you. So imagine watching a YouTube video, um, except it's always live and you can talk to the person and get real feedback and talk to the other people in the community um, and get to know them and support them and that kind of thing. And so that's that's what Twitch is. And now it's, you know, there's Facebook gaming that's on YouTube. There's Instagram Live uh, where people are playing it on. People are streaming video games on TikTok now. Um, Microsoft had their own and Mixer. That's that's no longer a thing. I think they went over to Facebook. Um, but it's it's pretty wild and it's it's still in its infancy. It's really growing. Mm. Um, now, again, being the older brother in the household, I want to play games. I don't want to watch other people play games. But I have experienced the phenomena like the latest Resident Evil came out and I have like, oh, like it came out before like the release date. So it was kind of a sneak uh, peek of watching this guy play. And he was like, it's a horror game. And, you know, the way the lighting and the music and these zombies coming at you. And he was screaming like a girl. <laughs> and but it was so fun to again a game like that. You don't necessarily want to be alone. And so I found myself like I actually want to keep watching this other guy play a video game. And he's interacting with the chat and and they want his feedback on how this game is, how it matches up to other games. And as you mentioned, there's a dynamism there. There's real relationships because clearly there's there's people that the gamer knew and was referring to again and again. So, again, it, it's wild to me as an old man console gamer at where the online game world is now. Yeah, and me too, right? I'm right there with you. Uh, I, I barely watch other people play, but when I do, I'm also playing games uh, on, at the same time, right? So it's up. Most people nowadays, they'll have two monitors or three, and so they can play a game on one and look over here to the other and watch someone. And during the breaks while they're loading, they can look over. I think there's this, like, there's a lot of misconceptions about gaming, and maybe we'll get into more later. But one of them, I think, is that these people who are watching others play games are just sitting there, right? Just right, eating right. Cheetos never leaving the couch and, and just like yelling at a, at a TV. And it's like, not like that at all. Usually you're multitasking. It's on in the background. People will watch Twitch while they're cooking. Um, like uh, husbands and wives will, will join me on Twitch while I'm streaming and say, Oh, we have, sometimes we have more fun on Wednesdays watching you than watching, you know, CSI. And it's like, well, that's a, that's a wildly cool compliment, <laughs> um, but also weird to me. Like my wife would never watch a stream on the couch on a Wednesday um, but but other people like the, a lot of girls play video games. Another stereotype that uh, exists out there is that a lot of girls don't play or watch games. That's not true at all. And so there's tons of like married couples who will sit there and watch and be part of these communities. And so it's it's not just people sitting there 
in their basement, never leaving, watching other people's play games. They're often playing or interacting, like you said, with communities of people that they know. Yeah, yeah. Gaming is becoming much and much more. Actually, it already is, in my, in my opinion, and statistically as well. It is the premier form of entertainment. It's emerging now as a major entertainment industry. So it's not just this niche thing that people do in their basements, like you said, you know, sort of locked in their basements. It's this mainstream form of entertainment that people are having daily in their homes, you know, and, and the sooner that we recognize that, I think the better. And if we don't mind, if we could talk about your your brother for a moment here in terms of the fact that you can even make a living off of hmm. playing video games yeah. and be an influence for good when there's a lot of like negativity and a lot of across all celebrities, athletes, um, movie stars, etc. Like you can make a dent in the gaming world nowadays, but be a po- uh, influence for good. Yeah, I mean, I think watching his his uh, growth and fr- really kind of put gaming on the map, um, w- w- along with everyone who came before him, of course, and all the developers who make those games and everything. But he really broke into like the the culture of the rest of the world by playing Fortnite with Drake one night, I mean, and, and like the world tuned in to watch you know this artist play with this really good gamer. And then, like, then just everyone started admitting that they play games. And now there's all these famous athletes who have their own Twitch streams. And uh, and they're making money off of it as well, even though they have these million-dollar contracts, right, that they're playing. They're, they're coming home on Sunday nights, and on Monday they're streaming. It's They just played in front of, you know, millions of people watching on TV. And then they're streaming for tens of thousands. Uh, it's it's It really kind of what Tyler did is put things kind of on the map. Uh, and and showed the world that like yeah everybody really like you said father statistically everyone is playing mm-hmm. uh, some some type of video game right? I said that recently at a talk that I was giving and afterwards this mom came up to me and she's like I do not play video games I just want you to know and I was like I was like I totally understand maybe I shouldn't have overgeneralized I said quick question though do you have Candy Crush on your phone <laughs> oh I love Candy Crush and I was like <laughs> oh, that like even you are playing video games right like everybody has something. Uh, on on their phone or whatever. And so, yeah, it really is kind of this cultural phenomenon. And you can use it for good. A lot of streamers, like my brother, will do huge charity streams uh, and and raise money for cancer research um, or or churches in need and all that kind of stuff. And it's incredible. I once met a guy who's not, he he says he's not Catholic anymore. He's on his way back to the church for sure. Uh, And he streams and he asked me, he's just like, hey, uh, what, what charity stream should I do? And so he raised a bunch of money for Little Sisters of the Poor. And like wow. yeah. just like and he doesn't even he, he just sent him a check <laughs> here you go got it from stream i probably had no idea like what it means that he got it from stream or who donated what um but it's a it's a really cool thing what what gaming can do when used for good yeah i can see the little sister the poor we got to find this stream where's it at <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of money in that river <laughs> <I'm> sorry <laughs> so your brother who goes by the moniker ninja when i saw him on the mass singer which my wife was making me watch. I really didn't want to watch it. Sure. Uh huh. Sure. Okay. Seriously. <laughs> but when they, they take the mask off and it's your brother, for me, that was an eye opening moment of here is video game culture yeah. breaking into the pop world in ways it never would have had done a decade ago. Um, where again, just people admitting, like, yeah, I play games. It used to be this kind of like antisocial activity. And yeah. now it's like, yeah, no, everyone plays from whatever you're doing on your phone to maybe a console to maybe PC. Everyone's gaming. And to have your brother on that stage with all these other pop stars, it just was like gaming is like mainstream. Right. It has arrived. Gaming has yeah. arrived. You know, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And before, and that was a, that was a really cool moment. Uh, it was one of those things, rare things where he couldn't even tell us uh, all the stuff you have to sign. And so he's like, if you're not doing anything, watch The Masked Singer at seven o'clock. I'm like, what? <laughs> Uh, so a very cool moment. We got to go on Celebrity Family Feud as well, uh, which was our second time. We went on regular Family Feud before he ever got famous. Um, but for me, like it was the it was watching NFL players and NBA players do Fortnite dances on the in, on the field and in the end zone and on the court. Yeah. It's like what you are doing a dance from Fortnite <laughs> right. to celebrate yeah. in front of millions, kn- knowing that everyone knows where that came from, and if they don't, they then will know. Uh, when they ask their their kids or their grandkids about it. Uh, Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's just, it has really, really pierced through the culture. Yeah, I mean, previously I was in shock uh, working at a middle school. You know, we'd have to chaperone dances and things like that. And to see at a middle school dance or even a high school dance during, you know, the cha-cha slide, people are breaking out, you know, these sort of emotes and things from Fortnite or dances from Fortnite. What is, what? 
this is really immersed and ingrained in culture. You know, it just it wakes you up to that. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, because so many people know Mario. They know Sonic the Hedgehog. Pokemon was a big breakthrough. Yeah, for sure. Um, in terms of like this Japanese phenomena that in terms of merchandising and TV shows really took mm-hmm. over our shores. But Fortnite is a whole new level. It's a whole new generation of gamers. And yeah. again, the gamers who've grown up are now like, we told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 100%. I think we all kind of saw it coming. I didn't see it happening like as fast or exploding as much as it maybe has over the last few years. Um, but now now it certainly just seems inevitable, right? It's yeah. This is going to be a part of our culture forever. And so what as Catholics, like we belong in the space and we also like need to, we don't have to do it. We don't have to game. But if we don't know that while we're at that dan- eighth grade dance at the Catholic school, that that's what they're doing, we're not going to be able to reach their hearts because we have we're, we'll be clueless. Like I'm sitting there teaching in, in a Catholic school this year, and they're just sitting there in the middle in their desks while we're talking, and they're just doing these Fortnite dances. Yeah. And if I didn't know that, I would probably be like, you know, stop that. It's inappropriate. You know. It, but I, it's funny. It's it's like okay, get it. You're doing a dance. That's awesome. You could show us later. Uh, right now, let's focus instead of just being crabby about it. Like I know what it is. It's funny. They're trying to relate to me. Um, and so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. When I was sent to my second set of parish assignments, we had two schools under, under our, our watch. And so I went in to go meet all the kids in the classroom. Of course, you know, whenever you're sent as a new priest, you always want to meet everybody. And, uh, the kids were not really engaged, you know, they're sort of intrigued. There's a new priest here, what have you. But then they ask you sort of, you know, father, what do you do in your free time? You know, they're always in their mind. I say mass and I crawl underneath a rock. And I live in that rock until next Sunday, you know, and I crawl out the same ass again. So like, what do you do during your free time? I said, well, you know, I like to, I, I'm a bass fisherman. So I like to go bass fishing, you know, like the ocean, what have you, but I'm like, and I love gaming, you know, I game a lot. Went until like, wait, wait, father, you game, wait a second. And just the whole classroom came to life, both boys and girls. Um, And they were just like, oh, have you played this in Fortnite? You know this. And I broke out some of the Fortnite dances, of course. And they're like, oh, Father Blake, you know. And it just it opened up this whole avenue now of relationship and evangelization to where these kids immediately understood that I was part of the group, quote unquote. You know, I, I knew and I understood the culture and not only that I understand it. But I, I embraced it. I didn't, you know, put it down. I didn't demonize it. I realized that there's something good here. And this is a common shared form of, of entertainment, but also of depth and of community that we all have together. And nor does it just stay there. Right. Like it's not us just to nerd out about these games and then it stops there. But like, OK, great. Now we go deeper. Yes. Now we point on where like what is we're looking for community. Good. Why do we look for that? Yeah. Like you find beauty and adventure in this game. Great. Why do you seek that? And yeah, asking those deeper questions, even within the context of these classes. So we would get into, you know, later on deeper conversations. And I asked some of the eighth grade boys, you know, why do you think you like Fortnite so much? You know, why do you love Call of Duty? Why do you like going on to Skyrim for hours? You know, what what is it there? Zelda Breath of the Wild is another popular one. You know, why do you really find that? It makes them think they're like, oh, and you'd be amazed at the answers that these young men and women give. I think most people who are not acquainted with the gaming culture, especially older people, would be in shock. And that you think, oh, I just like going on there and just having fun and shooting things. Like, no, no, they're on there because they're like, well, this is the one place where I have true friendship. Mm. They'll say something like that. Or they'll say, you know, I have a really difficult home life and I'm able to find freedom and joy, you know, in in, in Hyrule, in the breath of the wild. Um, and those kind of answers betray this deeper sense of longing that's within their hearts than I think most people would assume from the outside looking at gaming culture, you know? Yeah. And your example, too, like they'll 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 remember forever that father plays video games and then they'll see you at mass and and they'll think, man, he loves video games. I love video games, but he's pro- like he's fine doing mass right now. Yeah. Wouldn't he rather be playing video games? But he wouldn't because here he is doing mass. There must be something to the to this mass then. And he's being so much more serious at mass than he is when, when he is in our classroom talking about video games. There must be something there. And, and it really, I think it's amazing that they see like who you are right? and then they see who you are like, at, you know, uh, and on the altar and like this, the same person. Yeah. It's, it's the same person. Um, but mass is so important. And so maybe maybe I'm missing something about mass and I need to ask questions about it or rethink you know, whether or not I think I have time to go. Um, I just, I love that lived example as well. And they will see that they will, they will think of, Oh my goodness, look at him. He's up there like saying chanting, Mm -hmm. which is not cool. Like I love, I love it, but that's not like the cool thing. If you did that in their classroom, they're like, what are you doing? Uh, But this, he was just cool two days ago. This must be awesome too. I have to figure out why this is awesome. And I, I love that. 
Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, what success have you had when it comes to evangelizing online? And, and you, you briefly hinted at it, just being open to conversations, open to be like, yeah, I'm Catholic and seeing where those go. I know that my wife and I played with you over Fortnite. You had these like specific nights where they were devoted to inviting people on to talk about the faith. I purposely didn't touch Fortnite, so I would be as horrible as I possibly could be. And it was great fun because you're talking about serious stuff and the faith while you're kind of like ducking and trying not to get shot. <laughs> but what other strategies have you used to bring the good news to those uh, to the gamers out there? Yeah, so I, so I think I think in first, like when you brought up those faith nights we did where we're I'm playing with with, with people while we're talking about faith and having fun. It breaks the tension. It, yeah. it, it right away, right? It, it helps people's guards come down. And so, whatever preconceived notions that they have about the Catholic Church or about, uh, you know, Christianity in general, the Bible, whatever, uh, they they kind of go away, and they're more open to listening to what you're going to say. Because all of a sudden, they're having fun. They're like, "Oh, these guys seem pretty cool. They seem normal. I've watched John for a while, uh, and now they're talking about faith in a, in a kind of a deeper way. I'm open to listening." And so, I found that a lot of people who I know from conversation on stream are not wildly into their faith or have different views or are still kind of searching, that they stick around during those those streams that are more intentional to be talking about faith. And then they ask questions. And so they're they're processing and it, it, it's cool because you would think they would just leave, um, but they don't because it really is this community. Um, I, I really try to focus on, on like I said, on pre-evangelization, but I think the church can go deeper there um, because a lot of times, Someone will come in and just say something like, uh, well, you're Catholic. Oh, that's dumb. You know, the Pope is the worst and, and not real. <laughs> OK, mm -hmm. what do you think about the Pope? And then I can ask questions and they can respond. A lot of people on Twitch would just say, oh, this person's trying to troll me. I'm going to block them. Mm -hmm. um, but we have this opportunity to lead with mercy uh, as Catholics and, and on this platform. And you can say, OK, what's your what do you think the Pope does? Well, the Pope makes all the rules. It's like, Actually, the Pope doesn't make all the rules. Here's what the Pope does. And you explain it. And they're like, how come no one ever told me that? And so I'm sorry that no one ever told you, especially if you're Catholic, I'm sorry that no one ever told you that. But if you're not Catholic, I'm sure that's why no one's ever told you that. And then all of a sudden, all these other questions are being asked by other people. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you you seem to like, oh, you have a master's in this? Like, well, what's the deal with Mary? And all of a sudden, like this pre-evangelization stream that's supposed to just be an open, loving community with with good language and, and, and good community is now in this like deep dive of of Catholic theology and no, and people are just joining. No one's leaving. Like it, the stream numbers are growing, um, and so it's there. I per, admittedly would like to do more of it. Uh, I have a mm -hmm. full time job, three kids, uh, and some other projects that that I'm doing. I'd love to do more of it because I think that the church belongs in the space, and really like that leading with mercy is just something that doesn't happen often online, and maybe especially in, in gaming communities. And, and I think people really respond well to that. Yeah, it's um, and you're addressing in that kind of context, Jonathan, one of the major problems nowadays, which is what I a phenomenon that I call reverse catechesis. So what's taking place is that secular society has done a better job catechizing our kids about the Catholic faith than we have as the church. So you have people like Bill Maher and these other guys who are telling your kids what the Catholic Church believes. You know, anchors mm -hmm. on major new at, news out, at outlets are saying, you know, hey, this is what. The church believes, but it's not what the church believes, but they're the ones that are catechizing about that. So we need to be the voice that's properly catechizing this generation and taking care of that reverse catechesis and sort of undoing it. And we do so by entering into these kind of mediums. And, and it's beautiful also what you said about leading with mercy, because I found that myself as a gamer when I'm online, um, every once in a while, you know, you'll get that 12 year old kid who's crazy good at the game. You know, <laughs> they sort of jump on the 10, 11 year old. And, uh, you know, they're looking for just some kind of mentorship. They're looking for a place to accept them. You know, a lot, a lot of times, especially those older guy gamers, they'll drop out of a lobby immediately the, no, the moment they hear that high-pitched voice come on. And, hey, guys, I'm ready to play. It's like, okay, they, dro they drop out. Um, but I always stay because there's an opportunity here, you know, to like really mentor and to be patient and to be kind. You know, then maybe the kid might try to use foul language, something like that, and you sort of correct them. And it just becomes this wonderful school of community and friendship. Um, and you... The, the child is touched, you know, they're really, they're like, wow, this is, there's this adult who's really mentoring me and for me and being patient with me and kind with me. And, uh, and there's a lot of kids out there like that in the gaming world. And of course, there's a lot of adults like that too, who just haven't, who I've had interactions with as well, who just don't know about mercy, you know, um, and don't know what it means to be walked with and accompanied in that, in that way. Yeah, absolutely. We had, uh, uh, we met a bunch of, had a kind of a meetup at my house, something we did with my wife and I called Hospitality Nights. We just opened the door and feed whoever showed up. 
and some people from stream showed up, including pre-Semit on stream and then others. Um, and we had a guy have his first uh, recon first reconciliation since his first reconciliation, you know, 25 years later, with a priest that he was comfortable with because of the stream community. That's where he met him. There were other priests there, but he knew that one from the you know his screen name, whatever his screen right. name is on Twitch. And all of a sudden, in the corner of the house is his. Is, he's like, "Hey, can we do confession?" And Father's like, "Of course we can." Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's wild. And now nowadays, with all the different conferences that happen and all that kind of stuff. That's not going to be a, a rare thing, right? Like, Father, if you're playing with uh, games, you're going to meet someone in the next few years at a conference who says, like, we played a game once. And yeah. I want to go to confession with you because I, because I trust you. Like, that's, that, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah. And that might be, who knows, that actually might be a really, really good idea of maybe Word on Fire or something like that, getting a booth or those kind of things at, at some of these conferences and conventions and games. And that could be set up a confessional booth right there. You know, <laughs> we'll hear confessions, you know, I'm, put my handle on uh, on the bottom of the screen, there, Britannicus Rocks 101. Um, but uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, you're absolutely correct. That's a that's just such a beautiful outlet of evangelization. And and you've done an outstanding job. I've seen some of your things. I did. I did watch the Faith Night whenever um Bobby Angel attempted to play a video game um, and it was just a, it was a wonderful wonderful thing to witness and just to see how you're able to do that through your through your gifts and talents and I almost I almost won one round because I just was running the whole time and I somehow outlasted and you were like cheering me on and I almost <laughs> made it but the guy like killed me in the end it was survival man it was well, I think run. yeah you were running and you were driving away and then towards the end I, I think we were trying to get you to hide in different bushes <laughs> Everyone's yelling at me and I'm trying to like have a serious conversation about my faith. The guy's hunting me. You keep dancing over the bush. It's just like, no, no, kneel down, kneel down. Yeah. Wrong button. Yeah. Jonathan, when it comes to, again, now as we who grew up with games, but now we're in, in positions of being catechists and teachers and parents, how do you uh, lead towards integration of the human person when it comes to, again, these things are good, but they obviously we can spend way too many hours in them. We can neglect maybe our responsibilities to our family, to the neighborhood, to our church. How do you help form people in that like integration of how to use this thing well and knowing when to turn off? Yeah, I feel like that we could talk for like an hour about this <laughs> and I have a lot of ideas. But I think I think in general, first thing, the first thing to do is to just say like to understand that there is good in gaming, that yep. that all that altogether video gaming is not a bad thing. There are bad things that happen in video games. There are bad things that happen on Facebook. It doesn't mean Facebook is a necessarily a bad thing. Um, there and, and so it's it's not all bad. There's good to be found there. Um, like anything, it's good to have boundaries. Like I, I don't I don't know about you, but I, like I'm not going to let my kids play basketball for 14 hours a day. Like it's healthy to exercise. Great, you want to play basketball? That's awesome. But I'm not going to play 14 hours a day. That seems excessive. I'm not going to let my kids play 14 hours of of video games a day. Um, I think it's important to have boundaries with all that kind of stuff, especially with with technology. And then as parents, like this is where this is where it's tough, is that we have to stay current and understand what what's going on. I, so just, just as simple as like one of the cool things that I, that I think is cool about video games is that you can play with with complete strangers and connect and meet these people. But also, like, I don't want my kid playing with complete strangers. And so there's easy ways to do that. You monitor their friends list. You Make sure they're not joining random lobbies if you want them to play with their mm -hmm. the, just the people that they know in real life. So there's lots of ways you can keep, you know, kids safe on, on these platforms and um, and use it for good. Um, it just really does require a lot of, uh, of of patience, of knowledge, and of work uh, to to find out exactly what what our kids are doing. Um, and then, like, to to understand that uh, it's not horrible to play for for a couple hours and to to not kind of demonize that because. Uh, as long as you're, if you can go a couple days, it's good to take breaks. I think, it, oh, especially with kids, like tell them to take breaks. For me, I've never once had a moment, especially I play more now than I ever have. Uh, and I'll be on vacation for a week. I've never once been like, oh, I wish I, I wish I could play Fortnite tonight. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I could, I wish I brought my video game system when I'm on vacation with like friends or my family. It's like, no, it's, it's not even a thought because, uh, it's a, it's a tool that, that I used to have fun. Um, and the, you know, Twitch to evangelize. It's not, you know, our, my life. Like it shouldn't become your life, right? Jesus is, is our life, and so I think like teaching balance, making sure that our kids are are praying and we're taking them to mass, um, and that they are that they, that they always aren't saying no to their friends who ask them to come outside, uh, and then really trying to monitor that, and and then also like listen to them playing. Kids, kids will show a lot of their 
either their true self or even maybe like who they aren't because you can kind of pretend to be someone else uh, hmm. online but they'll show a side of who they are and so listen in are they are they using good language are they affirming others are they putting people down are they screaming do they lose their temper mm. um, and just kind of watch all that because you can live you can live virtuously while doing these things mm. i know it's kind of a lot and all over oh no that's no that was fantastic no good stuff no that's great <laughs> Jonathan, we could talk for a whole nother hour, but this has been awesome. And again, especially if as Catholics, we recognize we're made in the image and likeness of God, who is a trinity of persons, mm -hmm. is a communion, yes. a community. That's what we're made for. We're not made for isolation. We're made for community. And we seek that out, whether that's a sports team, whether that's friends at work. Um, and most I, that's true to the heart is the family. Mm -hmm. Like that's where the like the the husband, the um, the wife, and then the child that comes forth. The family is so important because it images God Himself, and we seek that good community out in the video game world. You know, that's for me again. It's it's not something to be demonized. It's like this is a great good, but yeah. again, it's it's how we use it. Yeah, it, identifying that reality is going to be key, and I think that's where the church could do so much for this industry and, and to evangelize is being able to give a language and a name to these different tendencies within the culture itself. Uh, specifically, in this, the topic of this of this video is you know is community. The fact that, as you mentioned, we're made in God's likeness and image. We have this ache and this desire to be within a community with one another, and and there is a community that does love each and every human being. And that is the community of the Catholic Church. This is a community that will always accept you, that will always love you, that will always care for you. And in the end, what we're, what we're called to do as evangelizers is to make people aware of this community, to say that this community is open for you, no matter where you may find yourself, and that there's a God who loves you and wants you to be part of this, not just community, this family. It's the oldest family in world history. It's a family that sticks together. It's always with one another. And uh, in the gaming world, you see the ache and the tendency towards that family. So now we just have to find a way to bridge that gap and bring them into it. And, and doing things like you're doing is exactly what the church needs, I think, within this particular arena of, of video games. Thank you. I'm glad that God has called me to it. I think my wife is, uh, has seen some of the great works in, uh, that God has been able to do, and she's happy too. But she'd be okay if, uh, if uh, he tapped someone else's shoulder. <laughs> well, now another very serious question. How does one get invited onto this Faith Night uh, Twitch here? Would, would there be any room for a gaming priest to perhaps jump in? 100%. And, <laughs> and let's do it. Let's schedule it. It's, it's happening. That sounds awesome to me. I would love it. And maybe if we could do Super Smash Brothers or something instead, you know, I'm I'm, I'm still a little rusty on my Fortnite preparations. Uh. <laughs> no, it's kind of fun to to play with someone who's horrible at Fortnite. But I suppose if you make a donation, Father, to uh, to Super Smash Bros. Uh, for for me to buy it, absolutely, <laughs> I'll happily make that donation. <laughs> In terms of playing virtuously, I also hear that you have a button to keep the language clean. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> The whole soundboard thing is kind of fun. So, okay, do you have any more sounds? I'm sorry. Now, you've already opened up this rabbit hole, so let's just run down it full blown. Okay. I'm very important. Uh, I have many leather bound books, <laughs> and my apartment <laughs> smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to officially make a, uh, a money order <laughs> to submit to the head of the Institute right now that we need for the World on Fire video game branch a soundboard exactly like yours. So if you could just send us, please, all the information necessary. This is for the sake of the gospel. It's for the sake of the gospel. Thank you. Yes, yeah, it is for the Lord, but I need that. <laughs> it really is a ton of fun. <laughs> that is just awesome, man. But but again, it's thank you so, so much. It's been a blast talking to you, honestly. Just Jonathan, where can people go to um, follow you, learn more about your work, see what you're up to on Twitch, etc.? Uh, yeah, on all social media platforms, it's Bearded Blevins. Just one word, Bearded Blevins. Uh, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, those are my favorites. Weirdly, Twitter is my favorite. Huh. I, know, I, I don't see you enough on there, Bobby. I, I wish I did. It's you on Instagram all the time. I refuse to go on Twitter. Instagram is my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jonathan, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having me. An absolute honor. Humble to be asked. And God is good. You guys keep doing all the work you're doing. Amen. You too, brother. Amen. Well, thank you again for watching this episode in our series on video games and evangelization. I'm Bobby Angel, fellow at the Word on Fire Institute. And I'm Father Blake Britton, contributor to the Word on Fire Institute. God bless and game on.